Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and today in the studio with me, it is totally my pleasure to introduce Nick Bayer, founder of Saxby's Coffee. Nick, welcome to the studio today. Thanks, Fran. You know, very exciting. Um, we were just talking earlier before the lights went on um, about what you do and sort of the way that you interact with your team. Right. And I, I was hoping that you'd share just a little bit of that because it's really reflective of the values of Saxby's. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we have a very different approach to, to our industry. I think most mm -hmm. people from the outside look at us as being a, a coffee company or right. in the coffee industry. But mm -hmm. at the core of our business, we're really a hospitality company. Mm -hmm. You know, we are a people-oriented business. We hire friendly, outgoing people, mm -hmm. train them, support them, and turn them loose to take care of our guests. So we mm -hmm. call customers, most people call, call their, um, their customers customers, we call mm -hmm. them guests. And so we turn loose our team members who are inherently outgoing people, we turn them loose to give memorable experiences to our guests. We happen to be in the, the, the broad base umbrella of the coffee industry, right. but we're very much a hospitality company that, that is in the coffee industry versus another coffee company in the coffee mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. And that's an important distinction. Um, mm -hmm. My cousin and I actually this morning stopped by uh, Saxby's Coffee in, Thank you. in uh, Haverford. Um, and one of the things that struck me was the decor, mm -hmm. the layout. I mean, the right. experience yep. that you just spoke of. Yeah. Really warm and inviting. I saw a group of ladies <coughs> having a breakfast meeting, and it wasn't a corporate meeting. It was right. like women getting, getting together. Yeah, They're no, just I, chatting. it's a, it's a great, uh, great observation. So one of the things that we do that I think is a little bit different from other companies, especially the really, really big company that's in our mm -hmm. industry, is that we take a lot of pride, passion, and, and significantly more expense to actually design every single cafe different. So no mm -hmm. two Saxby's ever look the same. We want mm -hmm. them to be reflective of their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So we want them to be places that people from that community feel like is, is really reflective of the community that they live in. But, but just as importantly, we also design our cafes so that they're great places to work. Mm -hmm. We all want to be proud of not only the company that we work for, but actually the environment that that we work in as well. So we, we go to painstaking detail to devise and, and build unique cafes so the team members who work there love what they call home and the guests that come in every single day feel like that's a, it's a place that reflects their home and is a, is a central place to their lives, whether it's a work thing, a personal thing, mm -hmm. or just going to get away from it a little bit. So design is a really important thing for us. Mm -hmm. Any uh, dating thing in there? Would that be included in there? Or? Of course, oh, okay, I, I think okay. uh, I, we've. Uh, I know we <laughs> in have terms of memorable experiences in hospitality. Yeah, we've <laughs> done. I mean, we've had all kinds of amazing stories in the past. One, one mm -hmm. um, in particular, that I remember that there was an entire theme to a, a wedding reception around Saxby's. So we actually sent a lot of product because they actually took their wow. first, I think they actually met in the Saxby's and took their first dates in the Saxby's. So we sent them a lot of <laughs> cups and napkins and product. So that, that's really great. I mean, because we want our spaces, we want to create, create unique spaces that serve mm -hmm. their neighborhoods, whether it's for dating or business mm -hmm. meetings or whatever it is. And, and I think we're, we're starting to do that really well. Wow. Wow. Well, that's a, that's a great kind of starting point or jumping off point for a question that I'd love to ask people because I just get such a wide variety of, of uh, responses. And that's, what was a significant moment for you that kind of put you on that path of entrepreneurship to found this company? Yeah, it's, you know, I think that there have been a, a bunch of different little milestones mm -hmm. um, in terms of me really figuring out that I was an entrepreneur. But I would say that probably that seminal moment. Um, and, it, and it wasn't necessarily happening at that time. I think it took me several years down the road to realize that that was the time that I knew I had to be an entrepreneur. But mm -hmm. you know, I grew up in a household with, with two great parents, but parents that were young when they had me and they didn't get mm -hmm. a, a chance to get an education. So they took jobs and industries that they didn't necessarily care for. And so for 18 years, while I was going through my schooling, I got to sit in a household and hear them talk about and lament what they did for a living. You know, who they worked for, what they were expected to do, the inflexibility of their work schedules, and driving long commutes to get to work and long commutes to get home. And, and you know, the things that stuck with me were, were Sunday night family dinners, you know, where the reality of having to go for f the next five days for my parents to work those kinds of jobs. Yeah. And it was relatively depressing, you know, and I remember that. And so when I went away for college, you know, when you go to college, you start to figure out what it is that you want to actually do. And I wasn't necessarily looking for a job, I was looking for, for a career. I was looking for something that was going to be the opposite of what my, exp my parents experienced for, for 18 years. Mm -hmm. I wanted to build something. And mm -hmm. I, what I wanted to build was a culture. I wanted to build a lifestyle and a culture that I wanted to wake up every day, not knowing if it was Tuesday, a work day, or Sunday, theoretically, non 
work day. Okay. I wanted to love what I was going to do and create a business that other people would love as well. Mm. And you have. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> proud of what we're doing, and, and, we're, and we're getting better every day. You know, we're, we're in the people business, and right. so it's, um, it's very easy to look at us as, as being in a product business, that you sell a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that sell cups of coffee, right, and there's right. a lot of people that sell a lot of really good cups of mm -hmm. coffee, but mm -hmm. the taste of product is a very subjective thing. Mm -hmm. How you're treated as a human being is very objective. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. your age, your race, your affluence, your lack of affluence. We all like to be treated well. Right. And so this business is about treating people well. It's about hiring friendly people, the company treating them extraordinarily well, and then giving them the tools to treat our 17,000 guests that come into our cafes every single day really well. Mm -hmm. Give them memorable experiences. So much more than just giving them a great cup of coffee. Treat them well. Mm -hmm. Show gratitude for them coming in. Smile mm -hmm. at them. Ask about how they are. Take that extra step to grab them a napkin as you see that they're spilling <laughs> something on themselves. That's, the, right, that's right, what this business right. really, really is about. And you know, the, in order for us to be able to continue to compete and for us to be able to continue to grow, it's about attracting like-minded people. It's about mm -hmm. attracting people that wake up every day wanting to make other people's lives better. And the more that we can do that, the more that we're going to compete in this industry and the more that we're going to be a preferred employer and a prefer, uh, preferred provider of coffee and related mm -hmm. items for people. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I'm proud of what we're doing, um, but we can always get better. Mm -hmm. Well, you've gotten some recognition um, in a number of ways. I mean, one of the ways that I saw you, sort of you personally being featured, was in the 40 under 40. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of business results, um, what are some of the the metrics that you use to say we are doing it right um, and our team's doing it right. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I think most, and I was honored to be, you know, um, selected as a 40 under 40 because obviously mm -hmm. Philadelphia is a, is a big city with a yeah. lot of amazing industry and a lot of amazing business leaders. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me to be recognized amongst that group and to and to join a group, because I think that was the 25th or 26th year yeah. of, um, of that actual recognition. So it's a, it's a real honor. Um, I, I'm very proud of that. Um, so I think that most people evaluate business, obviously, and how, how fast are you growing? You know, are you opening more cafes? Are, mm -hmm. Is your revenue going up? Is your profit going up? And obviously, that you, we can't hide from that. And mm -hmm. our, we're fortunate that we're in a growth-oriented business. Mm -hmm. and, our, and our business is growing. It's growing mm -hmm. at more than double digits um, every single year. Mm -hmm. However, I like to look at success um, in addition to just the pure metrics of it. Mm -hmm. a, a big thing for us is, is turnover. You know, what's mm -hmm. turnover oh, like in your business? And, okay. and we're, in, we're in a business where people that work in cafes are, are oftentimes non-salaried, and they're mm -hmm. oftentimes people that are non-skilled, meaning they're young, they're early in their mm -hmm. career. Mm -hmm. And so they're oftentimes coming into the business knowing that it's a stepping stone to going somewhere mm -hmm. else. So we inherently have turnover sort of working against us because mm -hmm. that's sort of what people's expectations are in our type of industry. But it doesn't mean that we should just accept that. It doesn't mean that mm -hmm. we should just accept that we're gonna have high turnover. I truly believe that if you create a great culture, you treat people well, and you give them the latitude to be entrepreneurial, you mm -hmm. know, to really feel like the coffee shop, whether they're the first, you know, the newest barista in a cafe or whether they're mm -hmm. running their own division of cafes, mm -hmm. if you give them the opportunity to be entrepreneurial, to innovate, to create, to disrupt, I like to think that our turnover will go down. And that's the biggest thing I'm proud of. Over the mm -hmm. last two and a half years, we've caught our turnover in half. And I think that we're starting to become... That's significant. Oh, it is significant. It is significant. <laughs> significant. And, and, and the reason for that is not just to say we've cut our turnover in half. Wow, that sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. It's that people are finding that we're a great employer. People right. like working for this company. And, and just as importantly, they're finding opportunities to be able to grow their career here. We have mm -hmm. countless people in our organization that started as baristas. They mm -hmm. came and said, you know, I'm just going to work as a barista for a year or two. I'm going to get through school and I'm going to move on to something mm -hmm. else. But they've figured out that they love the culture, the company treats them well, and we give them tools to grow. And the next thing you know, they start moving through the organization. That's of huge importance to us. And that's what is sort of like behind the scenes. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't get to see. They get to see mm -hmm. how many cafes you open up or mm -hmm. awards that you get. But the things that I'm most proud of are the people that are able to start and build careers in our organization. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really want to see Saxby's continue to be great at. Mm -hmm. And that, when I think people talk about America's infrastructure, mm -hmm. Infrastructure is really about how you impact human beings. Absolutely. It is about the experience, yep. um, but it's also about the folks that you employ. And I love that you've said throughout this conversation the word culture. Mm -hmm. um, that, in a lot of ways, is invisible, yet it's really very tangible. Right. Um, if you were to advise someone who wanted to start a business, um, what advice would you give them in terms of starting their business and incorporating some of the values that are 
really important to you. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I'm fortunate that I get to do this all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I'm an adjunct professor teaching entrepreneurship at Drexel. I'm an mm -hmm. entrepreneur in residence at my alma mater at Cornell. Um, and mm -hmm. I guest lecture at, at Wharton and Temple all the time. Mm -hmm. So I get the opportunity to sit with the next generation of entrepreneurs. And, and part of the reason why I do that is I wish I had some of that mentorship when I started my business. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, I, I like to use the excuse all the time that I didn't write a business plan, I didn't raise money, and so I, I created a lot of sort of self-inflicted wounds in my business yeah. because I didn't have that. I call so it this is a crawling over glass. Crawling over glass. Yeah. It's, it's a great, great analogy as well. Um, and so it, it is very important to me to be able to help the next generation of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. do it better than I did. Mm -hmm. And the big piece of advice I give people, not just writing a writing a business plan, mm -hmm. that that is of critical importance. And I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I don't think Saxby's truly found itself for about five or six years after its inception. Because mm -hmm. the idea right. for the business was here, right. but as you scale a business that's really predicated on people, the bigger you get, the more disconnected they are from the person who apparently has the idea in their mind, right. the less likely you are to actually execute that business plan. So you have to actually put it in place. Right. And the way to be able to scale a business is through culture. You right. have to define the culture day one. I've seen so many great business plans. They've created a great product or widget or gizmo mm -hmm. or whatever it mm -hmm. happens to be. But if they think it's, it's as simple as, this is who's going to buy my product, I just have to make, them out, uh, make enough fast enough and sell it, your business is never going to scale. Mm -hmm. There's just mm -hmm. too much competition. No one's ever going to mm -hmm. find the secret right. to life and, and expect <laughs> no competitors ever come into that business. Right, They're always right, going to come in. Right. Culture is what go is going to ultimately allow you to continue to stay ahead of your competition and mm -hmm. allow your business to scale. So that's the critical advice I give to people is write the business plan. It's mm -hmm. your roadmap to success. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be uh, roads closed and things diverted in your roadmap right. to success. Right. But a good business plan allows you to sort of reroute your course. Mm -hmm. And a culture is, is an absolute inherent component of being able to actually scale your business. You might be able to get it off the ground. You might be able to raise some money. You might be able to make some sales. But in order to be able to scale when competition starts coming after you, culture is going to be at the, at the cornerstone of that. And I've seen it firsthand in my own business. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that we're running short of time and you brought something. So I want to make sure you get to show it. Of course. Okay. So what, what did you bring? So It's like the surprise. Yeah. The, the surprise <laughs> here is you know, we're a business that's based on humanity, and, and I mm. wanted to build this business. As as, um, as dramatic as it can sound um, in me saying that I wanted to build a business that was going to have an impact on humanity, I'm very honest and truthful with that. That's mm -hmm. what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to give people the opportunity to work for a company that does well for its for its team members, does well mm -hmm. for its community and its guests. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, we had to be a great employer. Um, I want to have people not have to work jobs the way that my parents worked jobs okay. for, for a okay. lot of years. And so totally one of the things I love it. about the coffee business is the coffee business touches a wide range of population. You don't have to be rich, you don't have to be educated, you don't have to be a particular religious denomination to, to mm -hmm. make sense or go to a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Everybody can and, f and and be welcomed in a great neighborhood coffee shop. And that's what Saxby was always gonna be, was gonna be predicated on. And so mm -hmm. one of the things I'm most proud of, you had asked me you know, coming into mm -hmm. this, is what, what are you most proud of? And th right. this is a picture here that um, that is something that I'm, I'm super proud of. I know you've seen so it before, Fran. And hold it up for the camera. There. This is a picture here, so the guy with the uh, slick back hair there, you could probably <laughs> guess who that is. Um, the least important person in that picture, actually. So the young man that um, that I'm hugging there, uh, his name is Dante, mm -hmm. his wife Janine, and this is their, their oh, son, little right, Dante. Right. Um, he's uh, a little bit over three years old right now. So, mm -hmm. so Dante, um, I was introduced to uh, approximately uh, four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. I was approached by the Covenant House here in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, a, essentially a homeless shelter for, for youth, uh, where mm -hmm. they try to give them life skills to be able to matriculate into, into the, the real world and become productive citizens. And um, so I, uh, they asked if I would come and speak to the, the people in their, their facility. And I wanted to take it a step further than that. I wanted to start creating a relationship where we could hire people. And so I met Dante. And Dante had had a lot of trials and tribulations in his life. And I met him and he had a smile that could brighten up a room. And I sensed a, a, just a greatness in him and that he wanted to make something mm -hmm. of his life. And so we took a chance on him and he took a chance on us four, four plus years ago. And we brought him in as an entry level, actually even before the barista level, he was just helping sort of clean our cafes. Okay. And he showed up on time and he was friendly and he did all the things that we expect of any team member in our business. So mm -hmm. we continued to train him and mm -hmm. support him and he continued to get promoted and promoted and promoted. Wow. And this young man now um, is, is a uh, full salaried, full healthcare benefit. Um, he's created a family. 
Um, he is an absolute critical component of our business. When we open up new cafes, Dante is a critical component of opening those cafes. Wow. He um, helps That's run true. our 3rd Street Station location in Philadelphia, which is incredibly busy. But yeah. this is a this is you know this picture is worth a, a thousand words. Like this is why I got into this business. I got into this business to be able to create opportunity for people and for people to love what they do for a living. Mm-hmm. And Dante is going to have a bright future with this company. Not only because he's going to continue to take on more responsibility in the company, but he's becoming a mentor in our organization. We're hiring more people out of Youth mm-hmm. Build, not out of the Covenant right. House, right. and everybody needs hope. Right. Everybody needs hope. And when you right. can see someone who walked the same streets that you walked, went through the same trials and tribulations, you can see how they built success, mm-hmm. that becomes a motivator for other people. So this is what our business is about. It's about the hard work that Dante has done and what he does to make Saxby's a, a better place. So, so I'm very, very proud of this. Nick, that is a wonderful close. Thank you. Wonderful close. Thank you so much for being on the program. Thanks, for It's been a pleasure. Thanks for bringing your team. Of course. Um, and thanks for doing and just really having the vision and executing on it. Thank um, you so in much. In a way that makes for a great experience. It's my pleasure being here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And there you have it. Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. And my guest today is Nick Bayer. CEO and founder of Saxby's Coffee, and you can find them on the web at saxbycoffee.com.